Turning now to the ongoing Russia investigation, it continues to dog the administration despite President Trump's best attempts to change the subject to anything besides Special Prosecutor Robert Mueller's look into possible collusion between the Russian government and the Trump campaign. Let's talk about it with one of our favorite guests, Richard Painter, professor of law at the University of Minnesota, chief White House ethics lawyer from 25 to 2007, and he's currently the vice chair for Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. He joins me from Minneapolis. So what do you make of the fact that the prosecutor has not contacted this Russian lawyer? Well, uh, the prosecutor, uh, they're talking to a lot of people, and uh, we don't know when they will talk to her and what they need to find out from her uh, about uh, this meeting. But the key is what uh, did the Trump campaign uh, officials want from the Russians? What were they willing to give in return? Uh, what uh, collaboration uh, was going on with the Russians at this meeting? And if she just set up the meeting, as opposed to participating in it in a substantial way, she would be uh, lower in priority uh, as someone to talk to, uh, as opposed to the principals who were behind the meeting. Uh, so we'll see uh, who the special prosecutor's office wants to talk to. I'm sure they'll probably get to her, but uh, I think they know what they're doing, and they are uh, very much interested in finding out what happened at that meeting. You think she hasn't been contacted because she wasn't at the meeting? I don't know. Uh, you never know why they haven't contacted someone, and indeed she says she wasn't contacted. That's another thing. We don't know whether that's true or not. Uh, the special prosecutor, he's going to do business the way he thinks is appropriate. Uh, Rob Mueller is an experienced investigator, uh, and I think he's going to talk to the people he needs to talk to in the order of priority. Uh, to put together the case he needs. Uh, he has a lot of things to investigate. Uh, so I don't know whether he's talked to her or not. Uh, probably not if she says he hasn't, but uh, we'll just see what happens. Right, Donald Trump Jr. has no formal role in his father's administration. How might this affect the focus of the Mueller investigation? Well, he did have a role in the campaign, and the critical question here is whether the campaign collaborated with the Russians, uh, and uh, what happened, uh, who did what, who knew that the Russians had stolen emails uh, uh, about Hillary Clinton, uh, and uh, who talked to the Russians about what was going to be done with those stolen emails. Uh, so this is an issue really surrounding the Trump campaign. Uh, the Trump administration uh, has a different problem, and that is the number of people lied about their contacts with the Russians, the number of people who may have been engaged in a cover-up, including the president, in firing James Comey from the FBI. Uh, that's a separate problem, and that wouldn't involve Donald Trump Jr. if he uh, was not working for the government, which he was not. All right, the House Intelligence Committee has subpoenaed the FBI and Department of Justice for documents about the controversial dossier that linked Trump to Russia. What do, what, do we, what do you know about that? I have no idea what's that dossier. There, there are all sorts of wild stories about crazy things happening in hotel rooms and everything else. Uh, I, I don't know uh, that any of that is criminal. Uh, the real issue here is do the Russians have anything over Donald Trump, uh, whether it's financial ties or anything else they could use to try to uh, uh, control his conduct in office as president of the United States. And the House and Senate Intelligence Committees are entitled to find that out. Panel issued those subpoenas to the FBI director and the attorney general about the dossier. We're supposed to handle it all over on September 1st. The deadline is now September 14th. Why the delay, do you think? I don't know what's going on there and whether they... Uh, 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 need to gather uh, more information and find out everything they've got to make, uh, make sure and comply with the subpoena, uh, whether they're complying in good faith or not. Uh, it depends on who's in charge and who's making those decisions. I, I would assume that the Justice Department wouldn't play around with this. Uh, when there's a subpoena, you've got to provide the documents or have a good explanation as to why you didn't. Uh, so I would expect those documents to arrive shortly. Is it a good idea to have, like, three investigations going on at the same time? I, I think we have to. The Mueller investigation is uh, looking at a potential criminal activity. 
uh, not only in the collaboration with the Russians, but people lying about their contacts with the Russians to get security clearances and on financial disclosure forms. The Mueller investigation will look into obstruction of justice, uh, whether by President Trump or anyone else. But the focus of that investigation is uh, potential criminal activity. Uh, the uh, focus of the House and Senate Intelligence Committee uh, should be much broader. Uh, we need to know what the Russians did to interfere with our election, who in the United States was helping them, whether or not that was legal or illegal. Uh, and uh, then uh, we need to think about how we can prevent this type of thing from happening in the future. We also need to know if our president is beholden to the Russians, whether through financial transactions or otherwise. Uh, and once again, there, this could be a perfectly legal a business relationship he has with people in Russia. Uh, whatever it is, needs to be uh, uh, discovered uh, so uh, Congress is aware of it. Because he denies any contact at all, business or otherwise. Well, he does, and yet his son has said he has a lot of deals in Russia, and his lawyer was trying to open up a t Trump hotel in Moscow during the uh, election campaign. So. Uh, there are a lot of inconsistent and untruthful statements being made about Russia by people affiliated with the Trump Organization, including the president himself. Do you expect that Mueller's scope of the investigation might be limited by congressional action? I don't think Congress is going to try to limit uh, Bob Mueller. If Bob Mueller sticks with Russia and the uh, influence of Russia on our election and on this administration, or on anybody who obstructed justice in connection with the Russia investigation, he's on safe ground. Now, if he uh, does what Ken Starr did and starts getting into whether the president lied under oath about his sex life or something like that, I, I think Congress might get a little upset and say that's, that's not where a special counsel is supposed to go. We, we've been through that, and that didn't work out so well. What would happen if Trump fired Mueller? Oh, there'd be a... <laughs> There'd be an uproar over that. I think Congress would uh, probably uh, pass a special counsel statute and uh, put someone else in his place. Uh, uh, it could also lead to uh, calls to impeach President Trump. Uh, that would be a very bad move. The Democrats calling for impeachment now, are they premature? Is that a wrong move? Well, I think only a handful of Democrats are calling for impeachment. I, I don't think Democrats really want impeachment because uh, the longer this goes on, uh, the worse it looks for the Republican Party. And right now, if the Democrats get impeachment, they just get Mike Pence. Uh, they wait till they get control of the House, and then they could try to take out Trump and Pence. So I, I do not see a lot of Democrats being very enthusiastic to remove the president right now. That may be just sh sheer politics. Uh, if I were the Republicans, I'd be thinking seriously about uh, what could be done about this problem, because it, it's a serious problem. Richard, it's always great having you with us. Thank you very much, Larry.